Hey there, thanks for stopping by. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Glory and I'm a third year student studying at the Bartlett School of Architecture here at UCL. And because it is Christmas break, um, I thought it would be a nice idea to share with you guys my year three project one. Um, because it's been quite a long term, but also a very fast term. Uh, I can't believe I'm already a third of the year done already. So I thought it'd be nice to share my project with you guys. Plus, for those who has been watching my vlogs, thank you so much for the continuous support. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you so much. Um, so if you watch my vlogs, you see that I've just been continuously working nonstop on this project. And I just wanted to show you guys what the project was about. <laughs> So a bit of a disclaimer is that I am a part of unit 3 in the Bartlett and I just wanted to say that each unit has a different approach to how they work. So some units are definitely more digital. I have a friend who completed a film for P1 or someone else who did completely digital modeling. So it's just very dependent on your likes and your unit. So I very much like to do hand drawings, pencil hand drawings. So that's the medium that I focus on and develop my own language for this project and also for the further building project. The other thing is that this project is not necessarily has to be uh, a building. It can be quite conceptual in terms of like finding a language, uh, how you work and finding a working method that works for you. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like a straight on building. That's why this project might be more conceptual and less of a conventional way of doing architecture. So just keep that in mind and I hope that you will find this interesting. So a bit of an introduction to my P1 is that this project is based on themes that I like. So I struggled a lot with my mental health and my mental illnesses. So the theme that I would like to focus on for this year was on mental health and kind of things that I struggle with. So hopefully this also resonate with a lot of people who are, might be going through um, struggles with their mental health. And I just thought this would be a really nice way to kind of like tackle these problems head on and kind of like transform it into like a nice project that uh, people could appreciate, but also kind of like spatial architectural that kind of relates to things I struggle with. So I'm going to be explaining the project in terms of how I would to the panel when I presented it, but also kind of like sprinkle in a bit of like um, emotional uh, uh, struggles or experiences that I went through. So hopefully this will be interesting for you too. So let's get on with the portfolio. Okay, side note that I'm actually in Bartlett. Isn't it weird? It's like the first few days of the holiday and because I don't have a life being a Bartlett student, so I'm here at the Bartlett. Um, but yeah, I guess this is a nice change of setting compared to like my London room, so hopefully someone appreciates that and yeah. So like I said, I'm going to be presenting this like how I presented it to the panel, but also some of my thoughts and experiences on the way. The Gardener's Diary so this portfolio is laid out in the form of a diary, um, so you'll have like the two pages and binders on the way. So the gardener's diary. So a bit of a project introduction to get you a sense of what the project is about. So here's a quote that I thought nicely summarizes the project. The more perfect the artist, the more completely separate in him will be the man who suffers and the mind which creates. The more perfectly will the mind digest and transmute the passions which are its material by T.S. Eliot. Dear Diary, I recently rummaged through my old series of diaries and found some melancholic entries that sparked an idea for a project. It will be on the appreciation and gratitude in the form of a drawing diary in response to mental health issues such as depression. Located in the ruins of Renwick Hospital of Welfare Island, an island that used to house the undesirables of the city through its asylums, hospitals, and prisons, much like our rejection of mental health problems. The project is informed by my list of small details in life and on the site that gets overlooked, which will be spatially translated in the archive architecture prototype. The drawing grows as more details are noticed. The drawing itself acts as a growing diary where it gets reconditioned daily by me, who will tend, care, and maintain the space. I always have this feeling that there is a visitor within me that visits the space, who might create chaos within the garden based on their emotions. She is the other side of my psyche. We shall leave traces for each other as we will never meet. The drawing is where the garden is architecturized and the architecture is gardenized. I have always wanted a safe haven for my thoughts, a garden to diffuse my worries. Hopefully through this drawing diary, I shall find my peace. Yours truly, The Gardener. 
So I first started looking at some of my old diary entries and the things that I struggled with in the past and translated them into drawings, as you can see here. So here are some of the themes that I struggled with, such as perfectionism, abandonment, void, dysmorphia, self-hatred, and these together form the five agonies, like I said, and I pieced them all together as a spread here. I looked at the Visible Human Project, which is like to create detailed sets of cross-sectional photographs of the human body to facilitate anatomy visualization applications. And I created this map of the human head and the changes that goes within the head with like different parts of the brain being activated or which brains is which part of the brain is like, triggered when you have mental health problems and things like that. And this is where I uh, brought in quite a bit of references that I looked at before the project kind of started. So you have Clarence Smith, Miracle on the Mountain, where the house crawled up the mountainside with story after story. And you have Stephen Wright's House of Dreams, which he collected tons of trinkets uh, to showcase in his house. And the house is essentially a statement of who he is and who he was in a house that will never be finished. I also looked at Soul by Pixar, which is an amazing movie and everyone should go watch it because it's great. Um, and the th thing that I kind of learned from the movie and also from my experiences with my mental health uh, struggles is that it is the appreciation of small things in life that brings us forward and feels moved. And I also looked at Bethlehem Royal Hospital, which is kind of a, m a mental health asylum in London, and it was always compared to Palace of Versailles. And I also looked at Hostel's Hotel Sphinx from Delirious New York. I won't go through the references that much because I feel like the project itself is more important to talk about the references. So you can pause the video if you want to read through like every single part that I've written here. And we have Welfare Island, which is my site. Um, and essentially it's uh, in an island in Manhattan. And it's generally known as a storehouse of the undesirables because it was the site of like hospitals and asylums and the undesirable of New York City, which is the disease, the criminal, the impoverished. And I pick uh, Renwick Smallpox Hospital on the island as my site, uh, which is essentially uh, a hospital that is now in ruins. So this is what the hospital looks like. It's just completely uh, in ruins and some aerial imagery that I took. And here's just a map that to look at Welfare Island, the different changes that happens on site and how you would access it. So this is just a digital drawing I did on Procreate. And here's also another map of Renwick Smallpox Hospital on the different changes that goes through it, like the trees, water level variation. And again, it's also a digital drawing that I did on Procreate. So I looked at more references such as Lee Bontecu, which made an 18 year period old mobile. And this is kind of the whole starting point of my uh, project, where the thing is, the small details in life gets overlooked. Hence, the act of drawing itself acts as the appreciation of details, a drawing that will also serve as a diary of the journey. So this is the whole starting point of the drawing diary. And then I looked at the history of depression. So basically, in the past, it was believed to be caused by demonic possession, whereas nowadays, it's believed to be a combination of multiple causes, including biological, psychological, and social factors. And then I also looked at the history of diaries, which is a form of autobiographical writing, and looked at a brief history of diaries, where the diaries are basically to enable a movement inwards so that the troubled mind can find a way outwards and it's also to for people to reach out into the universe with a voice that will be heard and somehow matter i also looked at michael fall called technologies the self which looks at the virtual space of literature as a realm for experimentation and self-objectification and also to uncover the innermost secrets of the self I also looked at Orwell's Roses, which is the language of flowers. And for Orwell, the thing that he cares about the most out of his work is gardening. Because when the gardener is gone, the living beings are still present and a part of them is still growing. So this is where I introduced the characters for the project. So you have the gardener, which symbolizes maintenance and care uh, to care for a garden. And as the gardener of the drawing, reconditioning the drawing over time indicates the maintenance and cares that goes into the space. And then we have the visitor that visits the garden and may create chaos within the garden based on their emotions and behavior that day. So the relationship between the two is one where they will never meet each other, always seeing the trails of the other as they are one. I will also mention this uh, later on in the portfolio, but essentially the gardener and the visitor is the same person. <laughs> I feel like this is the easiest way to say it. So I kind of envelop both of the characters. So I am essentially both of the characters within my drawing diary because they're both sides of my psyche. 
And so here is a list of small things in life that gets overlooked, which will inform the making and form of the spatial prototype. So you have the way that the flower petals fall, feeling the warmth in a chair from the person before you, listening to the keys turning in the door before someone comes home. And this is just my appreciation and gratitude list. I also have some concept sketches, which will inform the drawing. And this is the act of drawing. So as more details are discovered and appreciated, the space grows and acts as a diary to capture the moments of gratitude. The space is reconditioned daily as an act of recording in a diary. So this is how the drawing kind of like grows every day. And I would just like scan it every day to like record the diary growing and how I like record and recondition it over, over time every day. So here I just took out like moments of the drawing diary so far um, and labeled it like petals creating ripples and then like the hallway of falling petals and moss growing in between cracks. And then I also looked at Louis Sullivan where he kind of like took uh, nature as an inspiration to create his system of architectural ornament, which is shown in the Curry pre Scott building. So there's more concept sketches and then the next stage of how the drawing diary grows for the next week. So this week I questioned like the making of the drawing such as masking tape as the connection points in the mind and the pencil of the creation of matter and material and paper being the landscape and basis of the mind. So then I also started to uh, uh, reevaluate the relationship between the gardener and the visitor. I brought him back the quote and this is where I say it's both sides of the psyche. One suffers while the other cares and orchestrates the space for the former and it's almost like a love story between both sides of the individual. And here I put uh, just a small moment between the two where the gardener is like essentially cleaning and sweeping whereas the the visitor is like oh look the petals are falling it must be the wind so it's like a nice um like relationship between them and then here i looked at the traces left between so i kind of looked at uh, the inhabitation of space between the characters and you have these sort of like moments where the visitor's shoes are left behind and the book that she left underneath the tree as she was reading and then this is the drawing diary as it grows over time again for the next week and then this week, I focus more on the relationship to the ruins at the site and Welfare Island. So you have different fragments of the island like appearing and also like some uh, projects of the island that famous architects work on. Um, and basically here I wrote the characters inhabit and maintain the space while the architecture is an extension of the ruins itself, turning it from an undesirable ruin to a growing space of peace and appreciation for the undesirable. So here are the projects on the island, such as like Four Freedom Parks by Louis Kahn and also Welfare uh, Island Project by Rem Kulhas. And then this is also where I started experimenting with more different types of drawing techniques, such as like these sketches experimenting with erasure and how the erasure would like continue and develop. And this also relates to Mark West's blackout drawings um, and how he covered the drawing with like black to kind of rediscover parts of the drawing that, that he may not have discovered uh, before. And here are the moments of uh, erasure in the drawing itself. And this is just a short animation to look at the maintenance of the space and the relationship between the characters. So this is just like a small wonky animation that I did that looks at how the, you know, the characters would inhabit the space and how the space moves. And then here are like more concept sketches for the next iteration of the drawing. And then here's again how the drawing diary developed for the next week. And so here uh, I referred it back to Louis Sullivan and because this week I focused more on like the moments where nature like tree or roots becomes the architecture and also utilizing the bricks of Renwick ruins bringing back the site and also architecturizing the nature. And here I just picked out a moment where like this kind of quote came from what my tutor said it's like architecturizing the garden and gardenizing the architecture. And then here I looked at the moments where the gardener and the visitor interacts because it's just kind of like letting the characters inhabit the space more um, and where the gardener builds and maintains the ruins as the visitor interacts with it and just picked out a moment that I thought was nice. Also, if you look closely, you can actually see a lot of like these small sentences and dates that I wrote on the drawing itself. It's almost like a diary because I, I, I write dates and like the feelings I feel. So if you actually look closely in the drawing in person, you can see lots of like small notes if I'm like feeling happy, feeling sad, feeling stressed or like crit or whatever. So it's, it's quite nice. This is where I also started to use trace paper as a method to create multiple iterations on a single layer in drawing because as you layer the, the trace, you create multiple iterations. So you have like a fabric sculpture forming through the capturing of falling leaves and petals and a, a ruins tree forming through the bricks of Renwick ruins. Here's more concept sketches for the next week of drawing. And this is the drawing diary growing. I think this was like the second last week of the drawing growing. 
And then here is where I picked out uh, moments where I was started architecturizing trees and the branches and just a moment that I really like with all of these different types of like gar the garden being architecturized and nature being architecturized. And then here I looked at more gardener and visitor moments with like just small, small dialogues between them that they would think about and how they inhabit the space and with the gardenized architecture. And for example, like she would be swinging and that would cause the tree to move and cause his hammock to move. And this is quote unquote like finishing the drawing diary because you know a diary is never finished, right? So this is the finished drawing diary. And then this is kind of like points where I took a, like a third of the drawing so you can like fully immerse yourself in the drawing and look at it. So if you'd like, you can always pause the video and look at the drawing closely because there is tons of details in there that you might be interested to look at. And I just picked out uh, parts of the drawing that I thought was interesting. I put the dates where I completed it and a small quote that goes with each of them. Again, you can pause the video if you want to read through all of them, but it's mostly like attempt at architecturizing trees in the node of Renwick Ruins and more zoom-ins into each part of the drawing. Again, feel free to pause the video. And then this is the second third of the drawing itself, uh, where you have the arrangement of architecturized trees and trees inhabiting the structures formed by appreciation and ruins. More zoom-ins where kind of like the tree is the column, the tree is the gravenel, and the tree is the floor. The relationship between the characters. And this is the final third of the drawing where I looked at kind of just architecturizing nature. And this is like the architecturized garden. And then again, more zoom-ins, like playground of sorts and how the relationship between the characters kind of like develop and flourish. And then this is kind of like the animation where I looked at the drawing diary growing. So it's just like essentially an overlay of the drawing. And it's like over time as the drawing grows, my mind evolves and my imagination flourishes. And I just did like an overlay of this drawing that I thought was really nice to showcase how the drawing kind of like grew over time and how the diary just like keep growing and growing and growing. Um, so it's nice to see the growth. And then this is also the second part where I looked at bringing the garden and characters to life. So this is also where I looked at bringing the characters and the garden to life. So on the left is basically a video that I kind of like brought the whole like drawing to life by animating parts of the drawing, but I didn't want to take away the, you know, the entirety of the drawing. So I did zoom ins on the right to zoom in in parts where the characters would be like in, in have would be interacting with the space and also how the space itself would move around um, and it's just nice to see the drawing like being brought to life I really like this last moment where they just the cleaning and preaching the petals and then this is also where I looked at the scale of the drawing diary and inhabiting the drawing so this is kind of the scale of the drawing and also like how the drawing kind of like engulfs me when I try to scan it because it's so massive as you can probably see in like the vlogs it just kept growing and growing and then this is kind of like the drawing landscape so over time the drawing basically became my safe haven for my worries and thoughts and I discovered both sides of my psyche discovered a personal language inhabited the landscape through a dual narrative and upon reflection and this person's flow theory the narrative characters and story emerge through the act of drawing and the reflection of the drawing so this is just a time lapse video that I did um, looking at kind of the kind of effort and reconditioning that went through this drawing over time and I feel like at the very end I almost didn't want to part with it like actually this girl in my unit asked me like are you relieved that you finally finished the drawing and I was like no actually I, I want to keep drawing I want to keep going like it's it's really like a safe haven where I just feel like I just want to keep going and keep drawing and it's like nothing really matters when I'm there and doing the drawing like when I came into the studio I'll be like this is what I'm gonna do and it's just like a warm hug for my drawing and it's just such a nice feeling, you know, like somewhere you belong in a drawing and you really inhabit it both physically and also mentally through the characters. And it was just like amazing. And then this is kind of like when the whole drawing diary is finished. Um, I kind of, my tutor and I came up with this uh, idea to like do a conclusion drawing, which is like a tiny drawing to conclude the massive part of the drawing diary so I did these sketches and to kind of just take everything from my drawing diary that I did and, and encapsulate that into a small drawing kind of like finding a language and then the characters and the architecturized garden and just put that in a tiny drawing 
So this was the tiny drawing that I did, which is like half ruins, half trees, half potting shed, half drawing studio, and half playground, which is my final conclusion drawing. And if you look closely, you can kind of see how the trees are architecturized as a swing and also a slide for the visitor to slide on. And just like looking at the relationship between the different characters and how the ruins come into space with that as well. And that's it. Yours truly, the gardener. And yeah, so that's my portfolio. So if you guys don't know, my drawing has actually been behind me this whole time and I just want to show you the, the sheer scale of this um, if you haven't been watching my vlogs because it is massive so uh, this is how tall it is I think it's taller than me definitely let me bring you to the drawing so this is the drawing so this is the drawing it's very very massive but there is like tons of details in there that you could appreciate. It really doesn't do this drawing justice by like just using my phone and film it because there's so much detail. So I highly recommend you to just pause the video at some point and look at it. And yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, presentation of my P1 portfolio. Um, it was just a very, very nice experience actually, well, because I'm actually here in person in London in the Bartlett and actually being able to talk to my unit mates and my tutor over term one was just been amazing. And I just want to personally thank Dan and Ify, my tutors in unit three, for their continuous support for this project. Like they were so supportive of me doing pencil drawing and just developing my ideas. So I really, really fully appreciate it. And I'm so grateful for the, for the experience and opportunity here. And it's just been amazing and also just developing the themes of mental health which means so much to me um, and my struggles in the past so it's just really nice to see that come into fruition and being able to translate that and transform the struggles you have um, not necessarily just like in general but also like within the architecture like community and culture of like overworking and being worked to like to the point of burnout i think it's just a really prominent theme to focus on so i really appreciate the support that i've gotten and yeah if you have any questions please leave them down in the comments below i'll be so happy to answer them and we'll see where this project takes me to the building project for the rest of year three i don't know how that's gonna go i'm quite nervous but hopefully it'll be a good year and COVID won't ruin it for me but yeah uh thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye